Hey, Jimmy Beach here with Alien Skin Software. In this video, we'll cover one of the most fun and quirky uses of Foca 2. We'll be using the Lens Simulator and Focus Selection to make a picture of a real scene look like it's a miniature. Micro or macro images usually have a very shallow depth of field, so objects at the focus distance are clear, where everything else gets blurry as you move closer or farther from that distance. On the other hand, a photo of a distant subject is more likely to have everything in focus. So we can use bokeh to simulate the shallow depth of field and trick the eye into thinking that it's looking at something small. Before we get started, there are two techniques that you should remember. First, use a shot taken from high and far away, like from a plane or a helicopter, or preferably a flying dragon, maybe looking down on a burning village or something like that. I guess if you don't have a plane or a helicopter, you could use something like a building, but it just doesn't have that same wow factor to it. A close-up shot of a large subject just won't work. Second, boost the contrast and saturation to make everything look plasticky and fake. Now we'll be making our transformation in Photoshop. I'm going to make our image into a smart object because I want to show some of the advantages of a smart workflow. Over in the Layers panel, I'll right-click on the layer and select Convert to Smart Object. Now let's go up to Filter, down to Boca 2, and Boca. When it comes up, I'll clear out the previous setting by pressing F5 or Command R, or even over on the Settings tab, I can click Factory Defaults. I'm not going to make a setting choice here for the time being. I can always change the type of blur later. The first thing that I'll need to do is switch off the new layer above current box. It's over on the Boca tab. By default, it's on, but we're using a smart filter, so I'm going to shut it off. The new layer feature is not compatible with smart objects. Also, it isn't necessary because a smart object gives us completely non-destructive editing. Next, I want to delete the default radial setting by pressing the X here, or delete or backspace on my keyboard and I'll insert a full planar sweet spot. Now I'll place the control center where I like it, rotate it just a bit, adjust the blur drop off way out wide, and I'm done. Now see you just saved a pile of money, tilt shift lenses aren't cheap, and with the money that you saved, you can put a down payment on your dragon rental for next time. I don't need to save this setting because it's remembered in the smart filter on this layer. The next time that I open the smart filter, Boca will restore all the sliders to the same positions that I left them in. Now I want to boost the contrast and saturation, and I'm going to use Exposure 3 for that. We'll go to Filter, Exposure 3, and Color Film. Now I'll open up Slide Films and choose Fuji Velvia. This film has a signature high contrast and saturation look. And the same thing applies for exposure, just like it does with bokeh. We want to shut off that new layer checkbox because we're working on a smart filter. The checkbox is over on the color tab. Now when I'm here on the color tab, also down at the bottom, there is a saturation slider. Now I can use this saturation slider to make the image even more saturated to enhance that toy plasticky look. Once I'm done, I'll say OK, and I'm happy with the result just like a toy model. Now I'm sure you're asking why we would want to use a smart object or a filter here. Let me show you over here in the layers panel. I can turn them on and off, each individually, as well as double click on them, and it'll reopen the plugin, allowing me to make changes to that effect. Fancy, isn't it? There are a bunch of fancy things that you can do with smart objects in Photoshop. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm going to open up the smart object now to make a small adjustment. Let's say I want to clone out the little bush over here on the left. I want to keep the original file, but duplicate the layer and make some tweaks. So I'll press Command or Control J to copy that layer. Then I'll press S for the clone tool. I'll hold down Alt or Option. I'll left click to sample. And then I'll proceed to clone that tree right out of the way. Now once I'm done, I'll have to save the changes that we made to our smart object before closing it. Control S or Command S to save it, and Control W or Command W to close. And now we're back, our smart object is updated, and our transformation is complete. 
What makes it great is that I still have my original image and I can change the filters without having to save or remember the settings that I used. I can just dial them in a teeny bit here and there. Let's recap. We learned a bit about tilt shift photography and what makes a good toy model image. We use a smart object workflow and we covered how to place a planar sweet spot and we upped our contrast and saturation with Exposure 3. I'd like to direct you to our website, www.alienskin.com, where we have beautiful examples, helpful advice, and plenty of other additional videos. I want to thank you for tuning in today. Until next time, this is Jimmy Beach with Alien Skin Software.